Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. I'm so glad you're here. And today I am finally going to make a haunted mermaid porthole. I'm very excited because I've wanted to do this since I made the mermaid portholes, I think last summer. So I will link that video here, but I want to show you very briefly how to make the porthole. So this is made out of a Dollar Tree plastic plate holder. Cut the spokes out of the inside and save them. Cut a thin dowel into three pieces and then take those spokes and you're going to fold them around the dowel. And this is going to be the hardware for the porthole. Use a brass painting technique to paint the portholes and the hardware to look like brass. Attach the hardware to the portholes and seal it all with Mod Podge. For the glass inside the porthole, I'm using a clear chopping mat cut to a circle and fastened to the inside of the porthole plate, and then using a little bit of hot glue to simulate water drops on the porthole. Now in the summer, I had put some mermaid figures inside of these, but I'm going to use one of these and remove the mermaid figure from the inside. So we're going to work with the porthole. And so to start, I want to grime this up because this is going to be a creepy Halloween porthole now. So I've got a two minute technique on doing a patina effect, which you could certainly watch, and I'm going to follow it here. So I'm going to be using Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in Cascade and Grotto. And I'm also going to be using a little bit of black acrylic paint and water. And to start, I'm going to take the grotto color, which is the teal green color, and dab that around the outside of my porthole. I did look for examples of portholes with a patina. Mostly they're completely covered. I did want to leave a little bit of the brass in the middle, and I did see examples that looked like that as well. So that's what I chose to do. You can, of course, do this however you want. And I also want to say you should decide if your scene is going to be like an underwater wreck or if it's going to be a ship that's still afloat. My choice was a ship that's still afloat. So I haven't destroyed everything as much as I would if it were an underwater wreck. So you might want to make it messier if it's an underwater wreck. You might also want to add uh, simulated barnacles, uh, sea creatures, things like that. So after I've dabbed on the green paint, the grotto, I'm going to mix the grotto with a little bit of black and some water and dab that over in places to make it just a little bit grungier. So especially at that seam um, in the porthole where the two uh, surfaces meet at an angle. And once that's dry, I'm going to dab the cascade over all of that. The cascade is a lighter blue teal color. And I'm mostly going to cover the grotto and the, the grotto mixed with black, but we do want some of that to show through and that gives it depth. I might put the cascade over some of the bronze color too, where I didn't put the grotto. Now you could seal that with Mod Podge again. I did not bother to do that this time. I do like the matte look of the paint without the Mod Podge over it, but it depends of course on where you're going to have this. And if you were planning on putting it outside or if it were going to get touched a lot, I would definitely seal it with something strong like maybe a spar urethane and that'll be fine that'll be fine for this look for it to have a spar urethane over it things on ships have a lot of urethane over them now i want this to have a wood background i want it to look like it's part of a ship and i have this foam insulation which i purchased when i made the mickey wreath and i bought a large sheet of this and broke it in half so that I could get it in my car. So I have a sheet here that is two feet high by maybe six feet long. This is the smaller sheet that I have. This is the one that I cut the Mickey out of. And where I'm going to put this display is on this little fake fireplace mantle that I have in my dining room. So I just laid it on the mantle and marked on it where the edge was. It's four feet, but I wanted to get it exact. And now I'm going to cut it. I still haven't bought a knife for cutting this stuff. So I'm just going to cut it with my box cutter knife. 
and I can get deep enough with my box cutter knife. This is a one inch thick piece of insulation foam so that I can snap it. It is meant to be snapped like that. That's how we broke it in half when I was in Home Depot buying it. It has little cuts in it so you can snap it. So I cut down as far as I could and then snapped it to get my four foot by two foot piece. Now I kind of worried about what direction I wanted the wood planks to go on this. I have examples of ships and on many ships, the wood planks on the inside of the ship are vertical. Um, but I think people associate shiplap with the inside of ships. When I see a drawing of a pirate ship or an old ship, quite often the planks are horizontal. It looks like shiplap. So for that reason, and because there is already a horizontal cut across the piece that it just comes with, I decided to do shiplap or horizontal planks. So this is 24 inches and the cut that's already in it is at eight inches. So I decided to do four inch boards. So I marked every four inches and I did that with a pencil because you can just press into this with a pencil. So I started by just making marks across the piece with the pencil every four inches. Now to make it look like shiplap, I then went over those initial cuts with my box cutter, except for the one at eight inches, which was already cut. And then I used the ruler to help me make a bevel below that cut with my box cutter. So I put my box cutter in at an angle to that cut and cut out a long thin strip of the styrofoam to give it that shiplap look. So I did that for all of the cuts. Now to give it a wood texture, I have this wire brush. And what you can do is experiment on the back. If I ran the brush in one direction, there were too many wires. They were way too close together. So I did not get something that looked like wood grain. But if I ran it the other direction, so that there were fewer bristles being run along, then I got some good wood grain. But the brush is quite tall. So I ran it along my bottom piece and then I used a piece of cardboard to protect the other planks as I ran it along. I think that one of the keys to making this look like real wood is to make each plank individual, to have its own individual grain. So I don't want to run the brush over more than one plank at a time. And as I'm running it, I'm just moving it slightly, curving it a little bit, just to give each plank a little bit of character. Now again, this is a place where you might want to do something a little bit different. I had decided this was a sailing ship, not a shipwreck. And most ships, they have pretty nice quality planks on the inside. So I didn't want to do a deep grain. I didn't want to cut pieces out of this or gouge pieces out of it. But if you're doing a shipwreck, I think you can have a lot of fun with the texture. Cut pieces out with your knife, um, you know, sort of splinters of wood and run the brush along really deep to get some deep grain. You could even try spraying with water and then applying a heat gun to it, although be careful because that will open it up even more. But there's a lot you can do to get a really strong texture. I wanted a light texture on mine. And then finally what I did was I just sanded it a little bit inside those shiplap crevices because there were a few little bits in there that didn't look like wood. They looked like styrofoam insulation. So just a little piece of sandpaper um, fold it in half and run inside those crevices. And then I also sanded the edges because they weren't very neat where I had cut this. And I gave a tiny bit of a bevel to the edges with my sandpaper so that it would look more like a finished plank of wood. Now here I have my porthole and I did do the wood before I aged the porthole. So it hasn't been aged yet. I took the plastic out of it. We'll just put that back in later. And I measured the center of my wood piece. You can put the porthole wherever you want. You can do more than one porthole. I decided I was going to put the porthole in the middle because I'm going to put staging items on either side of it. And I need it far enough up in the piece that I can put my lighting effect under it, which is a cell phone right now. Um, so I, I decided to put it, you know, roughly in the middle. So I put the porthole there and traced on the inside. And I want to be able to attach it in that very outer lip. So then I measured how far 
between the inside and the place where the two surfaces meet at an angle and measured all the way around and drew a circle around there. And then I cut that circle out with my knife. Now we can paint, and what I want is to paint the boards slightly different colors to, again, make it look like this is made up of several different boards. So I'm going to start with this folk art home decor chalk paint in Java. And I'm mixing a little bit of water in here because it is fairly thick. And now I'm going to paint some of the boards. I think I painted five of them with just the Java. And then I'm going to add some red to this. This is folk art home decor chalk paint in Imperial. It's just the red I happen to have. Now the red was a little strong, so I just dragged some of the Java through it to make it a little bit more brown. I also painted the inside of the hole where the porthole is going to go and all of the edges except the bottom with the brown. I don't want the bottom painted because I don't want the paint to stick to my mantle. What I have here is basically black water. It's water with a very small amount of black acrylic paint in it and I'm randomly applying that to the boards just to give them a little bit of grunge and definitely putting it in the crevice between each set of boards. I also in some places because the paint was still wet when I put this black on and some of the paint came up. Once it had dried, I applied some more of the Java and that gave me some really nice brown streaks in the wood that I ended up really liking. And I did not seal this in any way, but as I said before, applying some seal to this I think would be fine. Mine is just going to sit on my mantle. It's not going to have anybody touching it. It's not going to be outside. But if it were, I think I would apply Mod Podge and then spar urethane, but be very careful with that. Do a test spot to make sure that you can apply the spar urethane without disintegrating your foam. So I hot glued the plastic back inside my porthole, and then I did apply sort of a gasket of hot glue over that because I don't think the hot glue holds it very well, but my plastic glue had dried up, so I didn't have any of that and so that's why I used hot glue again to glue this together. And then to glue this to my quote unquote wood, I'm going to use clear Gorilla Glue. I applied the clear Gorilla Glue to the porthole because I don't know on the wood exactly where the porthole is going to lie. So I applied the clear Gorilla Glue to the porthole and then sprayed the so-called wood with water and then put the porthole down. I didn't show it here, but I did lay some heavy objects around the edge of this because you are supposed to clamp clear Gorilla Glue or put some weight on it while it's drying. Now, ultimately, what I would love is to create my own thunder and lightning effect with a microcontroller and some lights and a speaker, but I didn't have all of those components. So what I'm going to use right now is an app that I found, which is a thunder and lightning app. And I will include a link in the description to the app. 
This app is not optimal, partly because there's only a little bit of light that's coming from the flash on my old phone. And I think that I need a lot more light for this effect to work well. And also because whenever I run the app, it only shows the lightning sort of when it first starts up. And then the rest of the time it's playing the rain and the thunder sounds, but it doesn't keep flashing the lightning, which is the part that I really want. But to facilitate this, I'm going to cut a hole in the back of this piece under the porthole that is the size for my phone, just so the phone isn't sticking out from the back of this piece. So I measured around my phone and carved this out. And now I'm going to make a duct tape pocket to slide my phone into and duct tape the duct tape pocket to the back of the phone. So I'm just going to cut some sheets of duct tape, tape them together, and then tape tape to the back so that it's not sticky, trim it down, and then tape it into the hole figure out how tall it needs to be for my phone to fit perfectly in it with the flash still exposed, and then tape the top of it down so I have a pocket. Now the flash I've arranged so that it's under the center of the porthole. For the apparition behind the porthole, I used a combination of AI and Photoshop to come up with this image of a mermaid zombie who's sort of calcifying into coral who has her hands up like she wants to get in or she's trying to look in and i love this image i will put this on my blog for you if you are interested in using this image i'll put the image with the hands up and without the hands because the hands aren't part of the original image but what we need for the lighting effect to work is something with some dimensionality to it. So I have some homemade model magic here, which is left over from whatever the last project was that I did with homemade model magic. And it had completely dried out, but I soaked it in water. And what I'm going to do is use my mermaid as sort of a guide and try to make a three-dimensional apparition, which is just the face and the hands that I can then glue to a piece of cardboard and put behind my porthole. So I'm just going to give her a nose and cheeks, a chin. I want her mouth to be open because I think that looks a little scarier and give her eye holes. And for the hands, um, I'm going to use a pin once I've formed the fingers to give her some coral texture. I'm also going to make some coral hair and use a pin to give that coral hair some texture. Now, once that has all dried, I've cut a piece of cardboard here that I'm going to glue the image to because I'm going to have this behind the face and hands, although that really isn't necessary because you can't really see it. And I'm going to use Mod Podge to glue that to this cardboard. And then I'm going to use wood glue to glue the pieces down now that they've dried. And wood glue is not a great choice because it doesn't dry white but um, or clear but it's nice and strong this is holding together really well i did not bother to paint the wood glue because really this is just something you should be able to see when it's illuminated by the lightning it's not something that you should be able to see when it isn't being illuminated so the colors in the background don't really matter i am going to then cover the entire thing with a coat of Mod Podge. Now I tested this with an Amazon box that I had cut a hole in and my phone, um, the porthole and the apparition. And it's very difficult to see on video, but it does work very well to illuminate the apparition. 
I need this to stand up behind my porthole. So I've got another piece of cardboard that is basically a U shape that I've cut slots into that I can slip this into. And now I'm just going to paint all of the cardboard black so that you can't see it. And here you can see how I'm setting this up. I've slipped the cardboard with the apparition into the U-shaped piece of cardboard and put it on my mantle. And then I put the wood with the porthole over that. I didn't give this any way to stand up on its own, but you could certainly put some little bracing pieces on the ends of it. I wanted it to be flat so it would be easy to store. And I decided that it needed some sort of curtains and I didn't have any fabric that looked like pirate curtains to me, so I'm using creepy cloth. And normally I have a picture hanging here over this mantle, so I took an old curtain rod, just wrapped some wire around it, and hung it from the screw that I usually hang the picture from, and then draped the creepy cloth over that, and used some of my old pirate objects. I will put a link here and in the description to the video where I made many of these, and some skulls that Mr. Crafts the Charm made out of milk bottles to stage this, plus my pieces of eight. With the Thunder and Lightning app running and the lights out, you can see the apparition illuminated, but again, it is very hard for me to get a good video of this because it really needs to be dark for this to work. So Mr. Crafts the Charm had a light that does a lightning effect. In fact, it does a lot of really cool effects. So if he can find the link to it, I'll include it in the description. And I put that in the pocket where I had the cell phone. Now, I did try the scrim again. And you can see here how I have the scrim taped over where the porthole is. And no matter where I positioned the light, I tried it in the pocket and other places, I could not get this effect to work with the scrim. But without the scrim, here's a video of how that effect looks. But because I can't have the scrim, in the daytime you can see the apparition. So I thought for the daytime I would just tape the picture of the zombie mermaid behind the porthole. And then at night, if I want to, I can remove that and put the effects on with the apparition. I'd love to know what you think of this project and if you have any suggestions for me, please tell me in the comments. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this sort of content, please subscribe to Crafts the Charm. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.